Got a pickup truck with a dog box Slam full of hounds that don't know when to stop Until the old male Rambo's his name It's quick on his feet, hell on game Got a little chip in the back of the pack She ain't real fast, but she's true on the track She's got to drive and she's got the guts And that's why she's gonna run with us It's in the blood in your veins, you can't Time is passed down through your family name. It's a pack of dogs coming through the pines. Lights of fire in a young boy's eyes. It's the word of the hound. It sounds just right. It's dog time. Hey, everybody, we're back on the road again. This time I'm heading to John Strickland's house. I know you're all really enjoying this series. A lot of you reached out, said you're glad it's back. I'm glad it's back too. I really enjoy making these videos. And if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you like this video, make sure you leave it a like. And I hope you like it. And thank you for watching. So when did you start coon hunting? I started when I was nine years old. <clears throat> Nobody in my family ever coon hunted. My neighbor, a guy named Mike Anderson, he's deceased now. He uh, he lived down the road and had dogs. Always. I'd see him load up about dark, you know. I'd go down, Mr. Mike, Mr. Mike, I'd go and, yeah, be here at seven o'clock. Well, I get here at seven o'clock and he's gone. Yeah, he'd leave me. <laughs> so the next night, Mr. Mike, Mr. Mike, I'd go, yeah, be here at seven o'clock. I get her some of the puppies gone. Asked him four or five times after that. No, I ain't going tonight, he'd go. So then I asked him, he said, yeah, be here at seven o'clock. Well, at six o'clock, I was there waiting on him. When he came out eating dinner, I was sitting in the back of his truck. <clears throat> he had a regular cab Toyota, four wheel drive. And uh, he says, uh, get in the back of the truck, we're riding a load of dogs. So we went and loaded dogs up and uh, I don't forget, his truck was always spotless inside. He told me, he said, get in the back. He wouldn't let me ride the truck. <laughs> had to get in the back. We loaded our dogs up. We were about three miles from the house and turned loose. And I don't remember how many we treed that night, but it was a couple. First time I've ever been. I had a two cell flashlight. So the next night, I said, Miss Mike, can I go hunt? Yeah, yeah. So he take me, he drink real bad. He carried whiskey in a flask. He'd always drink. So he gets me down there and I got a two cell flashlight. Dog named Hubert. I don't forget this dog. His name is Hubert. Of all names, Hubert, you know. <laughs> and uh, he said, Go in there and get Hubert. He was about 150, 200 yards off the road. And I went and got him. And when I come back out, he drove off, left me. I was 10 years old. <laughs> I was three miles from the house with a two cell flashlight, Hubert. Every foot I walked, I cried like a baby. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I went around three or four corners. Probably four or five hundred yards, but it seemed like two miles. He was sitting there in his truck with his lights off. He was drinking. Uh, uh, he said, tomorrow night you be at 6.30 you go back with me. I guess that was his test, you know. And I, I to be honest with you, I hadn't really stopped since then. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember when I, after he, he would go and hunt in different places in the country and I had school. So I had a Honda 50, one of them big red three-wheelers, not mm -hmm. a four-wheeler. <clears throat> And uh, he sold me Hubert for 300 bucks. And the way I paid 300, I cut his grass for three summers. <laughs> he had a big yard and I push mowed it. it uh, I don't forget, I mowed it and mowed it and mowed it. I mean, he just seemed like, you can imagine, in Georgia, the mowing season's about year round. <laughs> yeah. know, so I got the smallest push mower the money can buy. I steady mowing his grass for Hubert. <clears throat> and uh, I got where I go by myself. And I had this Honda 50. I hooked the dog lead to the little bar behind that three wheeler. If I rode four miles, Hubert ran four miles. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
guy from Ohio called, <clears throat> and I'm gonna hunt. I was 11 or 12, and I beat a guy from Ohio with him. <clears throat> and uh, that, back then it was three hour UKC hunt, that's all you had. But hell, there'd be $150 you know, yeah. UKC hunt. So, the guy from Ohio called and said, hey, I drew you, called my dad and said, I drew you boy the other night, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> so I'd like to, like to buy that dog. And he said, oh, you probably saw that dog. He said, well, we're still in town. Where y'all live, I'm gonna come up and talk to him. So, this guy pulls up and he had a big four wheel drive truck, and a nice diamond plated dog box, you know. I said, hell, one day I won't be like him. And he said, what do you take for Hubert? And I said, oh, I, I couldn't tell Hubert, you know. Had a, we had a, we lived in a 12 by 60 mobile home and I had a down living room full of trophies, you know. <laughs> Mom's constantly, get them things out of my living room, I'm bringing them in. <clears throat> so he offered me $3,000 for Hubert. And you gotta understand, my parents didn't drive three thousand dollar cars, you know, honestly. And uh, I said, "Hell yeah!" So Hubert went down the road, <laughs> <clears throat> and then um, Hertz Ball and Banjo was real big at the time. And some guys in our town, uh, T. L. Jackson and Cranston and Miffer, had bought Pup and Roy off Hertz Ball and Banjo, and uh, they lived outside of the trailer park. They lived behind the trailer park, <clears throat> and Roy had got castrated, they got a dog fight in the trailer park and he was missing his ball so they couldn't breed him and that's what they bought him for. And the neighbors would call and he just let him run loose and he'd get treated in the trailer park all the time. Mm -hmm. Dog weighed 100 pounds, he was a big old huge loud dog, but yeah. he's as good a hound you ever turn loose. And uh, <clears> T.O. <throat> called me and said, hey, you want Roy? And I'm like, they paid $10,000 way back then for him. Like, what do you mean want him? He said, well, we can't breed him and he's running loose in the trailer park. We just can get him, so you go get him. So I went over and they couldn't find him. They didn't know where he was at. So I waited till dark. Got my mom, she had a Ford Pinto, a green <laughs> Ford Pinto, I'll never forget it. And uh, I got her, I said, Mom, you gotta take me at dark. I can't find him. We'd done been over two or three days looking for him. And uh, we pulled up there at dark, all over the tree to the behind the trailer park. We drove around these people's yard. I went out there and got him and put him in this green Ford Pinto. And I won the Grand American with him that year. Jeez. I got him like in March, and I won the Grand American when it come back. It was AKC back then. Mm -hmm. I won the Grand American in January, whenever it was. I was the youngest person ever won the Grand American at that time. Up now, I hadn't kept up with it. But that was a that was a real dog. Uh, so ever since I was nine years old. Have you always hunted walkers for the most part? No, I've hunted everything. Um, I, I'm still to this day colorblind. I don't care. You know, we campaigned country for a long time. And before that, I had one called a Wolf Creek Knothead, which I bought from Johnny Brown and Charles Dawson there. And um, they were from Alabama. And uh, I hunted that dog a while. We got the final four PKC World Hunt with that, with a blue dog then. Um, <clears throat> I hunted a black and tan for a little, little while, Albert, Albert Lyme dogs. Uh, it, I, I hunt a specific type of dog, I don't really hunt a color dog, you know? Right. I want something that's independent, they gotta have coons, they gotta be big hunting dogs. If they got those three things, I can figure out how to win with them. If they don't go hunting and they ain't got coons and they ain't independent, I don't have any time for it. Yeah. So, all the other stuff, striking or not and all that, you know, it kind of comes when it goes. But, but those three things, they've got to. They gotta have coons, you know. Yeah. Um, so I've hunted, gosh, I had two really good blue dogs, like I said, country and, and uh, uh, not head, and then we had uh, my girl Pearl, which we, it, when we had her was the only platinum blue tick female in the country. <laughs> um, and then Richie McDonald's little dog uh, come along and, and, and trumped her. But we bred not my girl Pearl. Her name was uh, Majestic Fly. Sorry, Pearl was a Walker bitch in chat. Tell us yeah, right now, Majestic Fly. We bred a Fly to Bad Habit, and that's for Flying Man and. That line, there was eight puppies, I think eight. Out of eight puppies in that litter, there was seven golden champions and, and one that, you know, never was taken to town. Well, and the reason why that one was mean, there was one mean one and <laughs> the rest of them were all, all gold champions. Um, but we bred Habit, a Walker Dog Bad Habit too, a blue tick. And that whole litter was outstanding. Hmm. So I, I've always been colorblind. Um, it's like hunt food dogs. Yeah, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I always, if anyone ever asks me like what my favorite breed is, mm -hmm. I feel the same way. Like I don't, 
I don't care what it is, I'd like it to just, like you said, have a certain style of hunting. Yeah, yeah. Anything. If, if you say what my favorite breed is, I'd have to say, and I've never owned a good one, and I've hunted as a good one, it's probably English dog. I've always liked a red tick, how they look, yeah. you know. I'm not, I'm not, I've never owned one, or uh, if I had it, it wasn't worth talking about. Right. Um, I've owned a couple of really nice blue dogs. Um, I mean, actually, has got the deuce dog, the black and tan now. That's a, that's, that's a pretty nice dog. Uh, but because of the way the walker dogs are, it's more plentiful and it kind of more fits my, my style. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, everybody's always like, he's a walker man. I'm, I'm not a walker man. I'm a coon hunter. Yeah. Whatever it is, it is. So when you got into competition hunting, did you have anyone help you kind of learn or did you just go? Yeah, and... uh, Buddy Electry down in Georgia, an old guy that many people know is Paul Sheffield. Um, and then and then someone still around that is as good as they've ever been is Tim Kramer. And uh, Tim, before he got older, and he, he don't hear as good as he used to, and, and he's got, he, he started another family with young kids and all, but, but Tim was about as good a hunter as there's ever been. Um, really, really good competition hunter, really good rules guy, he knows them inside now, he knows how to apply them, how to interpret them, you know, really good. And Tim was, Tim was probably the person that, took me under your wing and said, hey, if you want to hunt these hunts, we're going to do it the right way and so we're going to do it. And he, so he probably taught me more than anything. And then, and then Sheffield and the Electric, you know, would be second to him. One thing that comes up with competition hunting, do you think you would hunt as hard as you do if it wasn't for the competition hunts? I wouldn't hunt at all. <laughs> I'm telling you, I like the hunts. If you took the hunts up away, I, I wouldn't go and hunt. I mean, I love, I don't like, I can't start at all. I, I, I'm a finisher. I can finish one. I can hunt with one that somebody's been hauling and can't win with. And I see something. If you change this, this, and this, they'd be big winners. Um, I pride myself in being really, really good at taking them and, and turn them into a winner. Um, but as far as starting one, I can't start. I, I don't have the patience. I don't want to start. I don't want to learn. I don't want to try. <laughs> you know, that's why you hardly ever see me hunt puppies. Uh, shy away from the super state simply because I, I just don't. I don't like it. You know, I, I don't. I like to take a four-year-old dog, um, this coon trigger, and turning him into a winner. And if, if people notice, I, when I get a dog, a lot of people buy a dog and they get a hunt. You know, that's where they get a hunt. When I buy a dog, or when I end up with a new dog, you won't see that dog get a hunt for two to six months, you know? Um, uh, like country, for example, everybody's like, well, the blue dog must not be working out. John ain't taking him to hunts. No, he just wasn't where John wanted him. He was coming and he was going to be there. But until I got him, I wasn't taking him out. The same thing with the lady female. I got lady in October, um, like the 15th, and I never hunted her hunt until January. Mm -hmm. In January, everybody's, even Judas is like, well, I guess lady ain't panning out, boss. It don't seem like you were too excited about her, and, and we were right here hunting, and uh, we had Apollo and Paige. We hunted the bottom where we're going to go hunt tonight, and uh, we hunted up bottom, and I think Paige tree two down through there, and Apollo hadn't made a tree hmm. in this three mile bottom, okay? And we'd done been all the way down through it with a side by side that's hunting, and Judas makes that comment. It's like 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, watch this. We drive home, put them two in the pen, get lady. Go right back to where we first started, <laughs> tree five down to the bottom. And he's like, holy moly, she is, there is something here. I'm like, yeah, you're going to see it starting January. But she just ain't ready. You know, she ain't, she was winning, don't get me wrong. Right. And, and, and she had, she had had some success in hunts, but she wasn't where, she wasn't ready to go win a truck. She wasn't ready to go win a national truck. Right. She, you know, she just, she just wasn't there. Looking back, you've been doing this for a really long time, obviously. What are some of your favorite memories? Gosh, I've had too many to, to talk about, honestly. I mean, you know, they start way back from me and Tim sitting down in a place called Sunbury, Georgia, and uh, listening to them dogs and training dogs and getting dogs ready for a hunt. And, and we'd always have a low country ball or blue crab or oysters. We'd sit there at the back of the truck and eat them all the way to, you know, being, being at the the world hunt when it was in Aurora and we always had a camper there and Paul Sheffield and all the old guy, JC Ellis, you know, we'd have all the amount we'd cook and eat. So it to to two weeks ago at the Nationals, like it was Stevie Smith and, and Steve Yant. You know, that that was the final three 
there it was kind of a veteran cast. I mean, everybody knew going out, hey, there ain't nobody on this cast that had been doing this a long, long time. <laughs> these are the old guys, you know, yeah. we're gonna walk below six mile an hour tonight. We ain't got these young guys <laughs> killing us down through there. So, you know, it's all moments and, and I mean, there, there's some bad moments, but I'm kind of an optimistic person. I, I kind of have a tendency to forget about them. And, you know, I, I, I look at the good moments and there's just so many, so many to name. We'd be here for two days still. <laughs> You mentioned getting like an older dog and kind of turn that just from a coon trader to a winner. Mm -hmm. Are there any common things you have noticed over the years that you really have to work on dogs for? You, you know, the biggest thing is so many people don't recast dogs. So many people make a drop, put them back in the truck, drive down the road, make a drop, put them back in the truck. And the way I hunt, if I hunt two hours or three hours a night, that I hunt them side by side most of the time. And that dog ain't getting him side by side. Now we might move tonight, you know, just mm -hmm. because we got so many people. But most of the time they don't move until we're going home. You cut a dog, and recut, and recut, and recut. And typically, <clears throat> when I'm first hunting one, that's how I start. I mean, I'll start recasting, and, and I might hunt two and a half, three hours a night, and the dog never gets back to the truck. And time you pull them off a tree, don't give them no water. I don't give them water. I mean, I don't do it. I'm like, you're gonna be miserable for a little while. In a hunt, you don't have that much time. You mm -hmm. get, let me get your water bowl out, bud. Come on, you know you got to go find a creek if you got to have water. Go find you a creek. You go find water. You go find coons because the coons are running up water during that time of year, like summertime, July, August. You know? mm -hmm. So, so my theory is why baby them and, and why give them water when they can go find water. And they find water, they're gonna treat another coon most of the time. <laughs> you know, um, so uh, typically I'll hunt one like that by yourself for 30 to 45 days um, and then um, I'll hunt one with, with other guys or, or let them get treed. When I'm running on something you'll never see me cut first. I'll let everybody, y'all cut y'all stuff. And then when they get treed then I'm cutting mine after all these dogs are treed. And it ain't because I'm coon snobbyish. I, mm -hmm. I'm working on a dog. They're out there. I don't pleasure hunt. Everybody talks about pleasure hunting. I don't know what pleasure hunting is. I mean, I would like to go and figure out what pleasure hunting is because my brain don't wire like that. I can't, you know, if, if there's five or six guys that are all laughing and cutting up and want to have a marshmallow roast and drink beer while they're coon hunting, that makes me, the thought of that makes my skin itch. <laughs> I mean, it just does, you know. Um, if I'm going to do that, hell, let's go sit by the pool and do it, you know. Yeah. So, it, it's just a little different. It's just no, but the competition aspect is, I mean, you can't, you can have the camaraderie, but you, there's a sole focus when you're out there. It's getting yeah. the dog ready and getting it better. Absolutely, getting it ready for a hunt, getting prepared, sure. Yeah. Have you noticed, like, over the years, like, as far as how often you hunt a dog? Like, or do you hunt them every, like, leading up to hunt every single night? You give them nights off in between? What, what are your thoughts it's on that? according to the stage the dog is, how old the dog is, young dog, I would hunt every night. Um, these dogs I hunt now typically are about four years old, four or five years old. Um, they're settled. They, you know, once you get them in shape, you ain't got to hunt them every night. Matter of fact, if you hunt them every night, you probably do them an injustice. You pull some of the energy out that they, that you have, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but versus hunting every other, every night, I'll go out there and say hunt one three hours tonight. Come back, leave them side by side, hang out, watch TV. A little while, two hours, I go back out and hunt another hour, hour and a half, two hours. And then I might give it the next day off. And then the next night, I might just go drop one drop and let it sit there and tree for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll turn them loose behind the dog pen. Sometimes they'll be right there, tree. Let them tree for 30, 35, 40 minutes. Go get it, put it up the next night, give it off the next three nights. And, you know, if I'm going to Georgia or whatever to hunt, then and, and if I got people going, then we'll, we'll hunt two or three nights like that. Um, but I don't have a set thing. I used to have a big thing about I'm gonna hunt all the way as hard as I could up to a, to a major hunt. And now I do that, but about a week before the major hunt, I typically want to just let them rest. Mm -hmm. um, and say the hunt's on Friday night, then I'll even lay up, you know, that Sunday, that Monday, take them out there Tuesday, let them treat 10, 15, 20 minutes, put them up, let them way up, lay up Wednesday, Thursday, and take them to the hunt. Um, that, that seems to be working for the dogs that we hunt now. Um, and, and they're all a little different. Mm -hmm. you know, Apollo, I think, is a little better if you kind of hunted him, not gut hunted him, but hunted him 
30, 40 units an hour every night before hunt, just kind of keep his brain straight. Mm -hmm. um, but the females that I'm hunting now, you could you can lay them up in the pen, if they're in shape, they can go do the same thing they do. They just can treat them pretty safe. And when I hunted with Jeff, he said that you prefer to hunt females now more than males? You know, <clears throat> there's been several guys that I've watched over the years that, that have been stupid successful. Um, you know, Ryan croson has been incredibly successful with females. Uh, you know, he, he's one of them. Buddy Electric has been incredibly successful with females. Um, probably Wes Hamilton has been really, really successful with females. And if you look, it, and, and hey, I love a male dog. Big, strong, bigger mouths only. Big, good looking dogs, you know. Uh, and typically through the years I've hunted, male dogs. Then I get to thinking about these females that I've hunted like Salt Creek Jenny and Ton of Mayhem and Swift Creek Ann and Swift Creek Lace, you know, all the dogs that I'm like, man, we won <laughs> everywhere we went. And they were a lot easier. I mean, you didn't have the, 50% of the battle was done. You know, it, I mean, you didn't have the hard headedness. There, there's just so much more. So it kind of, it kind of flipped my switch, uh, you know, something went off in my head, and I'm gonna be honest with you, it'll be, it'll be hard pressed for me to buy another male dog to hunt in a hunt. It would really be hard. We um, sold Apollo, incredible dog. If he won the world hunt this year, it would not surprise me. He's that caliber of dog. Um, BK, a good guy, went down in Georgia, just bought him. And uh, if he had been a female, we wouldn't, wouldn't let him go nowhere. Mm -hmm. And everybody, like Jeff hates female. Jeff hates yeah, male That's dog. what you're saying. And I tell him all the time, so just remember, if you hunt for me when Hobo's Day's done, you <laughs> won't be leading a female. Yeah. Or you ain't gonna be hunting for me, you know? And, and uh, he's like, why do they come in heat? I'm like, you know, they come in twice a year, 21 days, and that's probably time you can spend with your family. You know, so yeah. so take a break and take that time off. So, so yeah, I just really started kind of reevaluating and looking at things over the, the whole career of my coon my career and i am tell you I look back and, and it is a heck of a lot easier to hunt females than it is males when you look at the whole picture right I'm talking about when you start hauling them every weekend they get I've never seen a female hunt smart never I can name two dozen male dogs that were as good as ever breed breed did ever grow breath, and I can name two dozen went hunt smart over the course of you know their lifetime. Um, hell, there's ten living today as good as dogs that ever ever been turned loose, and and they're hunt they're hunt smart. I, I don't know of a female. You know of a female hunt smart? You ever heard of a hunt smart female? I'm sure there's been one. You know that just quit. Uh, I think Wes had Ruby at, at one time, but I think she's been bred four or five, six times maybe, and. I think she went through a little lull, maybe that she, you know, they haul her and haul her, and maybe she went through a little hunt smart, maybe, but hell, it wasn't long, they were back to winning, they just laid her up for six months or a year and come back strong, but I don't really ever remember a, a female hunt smart. I remember taking them to hunt and see if like, they do the same thing. They seem more consistent to me. Yeah, it's, just, mean, it's a consistent thing. They're, they're just consistent, and if, if they'll be consistent, do the same thing during the week they do on the weekends, Hey, you know, you gonna win, you gonna win coon hunts. Uh, it's like the hundred thousand dollar hunt with a lady. I treat three singles. I get beat in the early round. She treat three coons. Yeah. What else do you want out of one? We <laughs> treat, we scored on like eleven. Don't get me wrong. Between the four, ten, ten I think. Between the four dogs, but she's by herself on three and had three. There ain't nothing else I can yeah. ask for. I left there and I was happy as a clam. Yeah, it cost me $6,500 for two hours of getting my, my tail beat, but at the end of the night, hey, my dog treat three coons. Um, and you know, a male dog, you can go out there and blow them out, it seems, or you will do nothing, you know, chase females around. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a, like a moment or point in time when you really started reevaluating that? Has it been a more recent thing? Yeah, it was, it was absolutely. Um, to be honest with you, I've hunted some good females in the past, and it never clicked through all the years I've hunted, um, and all these dogs I've hunted, it never clicked. And when I bought Paige, which was, uh, it would have been a year ago, April, so just a little over a year, when mm -hmm. I bought Paige, 
I hunted Paige for about, I don't know, 60 days. And uh, I was riding down the road and I said, you know what? And I get to think I was comparing her to other females that I owned. And I was like, what did she do that Jenny didn't do? Or what did Jenny do that she didn't do? Because we've done a, a ton of winning with Jenny. And I'm like, oh, man, they're about the same that they were consistent. And then I'm like, all right, what did she do that Ton didn't do? That Ton of Mayhem female, what did Ton do? I'm like, man, they kind of consistent. They just go tree coon mm -hmm. and cut them. And then hard with Ann and Swift Creek Blades. So I got thinking about it. I said, damn, you hunted some good females, you know? And it's been really, really easy hunting. I mean, there's been no real bad. Now, I can't ever remember, and I know I've had them. I know right. I've had them, but I can't ever remember. Like Habit, I'd be good at, good at that. Habit was arguably the best hound that's ever, 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 one of the best hounds ever, ever lived, ever. <clears throat> we haul, we win the Pro Division in 0, let's see, 02 and 04. Okay. The first pro in the year would have it, we win Georgia. The second one, Alabama, we win. Um, I think Jeff took him to Tennessee and got the final four and they split. I haul him to Oklahoma. Oklahoma. <clears throat> he catches like two skunks. Oh, I've got a Durango ready. I got to ride around <laughs> this dude with my eyes bleeding for two rounds. He catches a skunk early, a skunk late, never trees a coon. I am, so we go back home. Oklahoma to Georgia at the time was about 16 and a half hours. Skip a month, go to Texas, right back out there in that same place. He bays a boar hog, and catches an armadillo. You know, we don't get it, don't get in neither round there. Um, come back and we win South Carolina. Okay. <laughs> now nobody can catch us in the pro division if we don't, but we still gonna go. So I haul, uh, I haul into Michigan, which is a coon zoo. Love hunting up there. And I draw uh, our number with the Inot female. Um, Inot's about 18 months old, you know, and, and uh, I draw her. And here is one of the best dogs living. He's out there. Inot's treat this coon. And we're walking this before Garmin days. We're walking, and I see him over here on the right. He's eating grass like a damn horse. He's just over there grazing. Go in, I know it's got a coon cut her loose, she flies in another 300 trees, another coon. Get in, he's just kind of moping around out there. And I'm like, you know what? So, so you take that dog, for example. Most people would say, oh, he was sick, his thyroid was down. No, he's a damn male dog. That's what it is. <laughs> so, in my mind, today, that's how they see him. So, you know, I, I was putting all these scenarios together, all these thoughts in my head, that over the years, what's been really good, what's been easier, and what's been really hard. And I'm like, man, these females have just been a heck of a lot easier to hunt and a heck of a lot easier to stay on top of. And, and uh, they've been more enjoyable, you know? Um, you go to a tree in there and you got four dogs and they're in there and you can hear them blowing and fighting and carrying on. You know, the female, you don't even think about it. Yeah. It ain't no big deal. You don't want to get me two male dogs, if not three right now. You know, and it happens. You don't see females scratch hardly ever. You know, because they just back up and stay the hell out of the way. They ain't out there with the matcha. Listen, take 300 employees, 150 women and put on this side, 150 men and put on this side. The 150 women, they get all the work done in the world. The 150 men, half of them's over to messing with the women. <laughs> so think about it. If you want production, you know. So, so honestly, it's just kind of hit home within the last 13, 18 months. And uh, who knows, a year from now I might be like, man, I got the best meal I've ever lived in <laughs> But today I'm just telling you that I'm, I'm, I'm not, guy hit me up two days ago, a messenger, and he said, John, I've got this mail dog, or I've got this dog, blah, 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 blah. He starts telling me all about this dog. I'm gonna sell him, um, I'm gonna sell him, and he's this, he's this, he's this. I'll take 30,000 for him. And I, I sit back a real easy sentence. You lost me at he. No. You lost me at he. I'm not interested. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go buy a male dog to hunt hunts no more. I hope everybody else does. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But I, I did. And, and I'm not saying all male dogs are like that because they're not. I mean, you know, I, I can name way more good ones that I've hunted than, than bad ones or, or hard ones, but. 
but if you put them all in a basket and you take 20 males and 20 females, if they're all on the same caliber, it seems like you have less trouble with the 20 females than you, than you do males. Now, do you get the big old booming mouth most of the time? All of them not like Paige. Paige sounds like a male dog, you know. Um, so, so most of the time, no. But we're gonna try it. Yeah. So, is that how did you? I guess how did you get hooked up with Randy then? Because he has when I hunted with him, it was he has a very similar way of thinking. He's always really like the females is that yeah of... i didn't know who randy smith was honestly right. I, I, I drew about a month later we're in reading michigan at a pro sport hunt and myself and michael ward were, were buddies and he was hunting cat and uh, he'd been here all week pleasure hunting with me and we go in and draw and we draw this this female named lady with, with just a young boy all you know young young kid hunting and uh then norm there's one or two tickets left on the cards to draw and our cats went the full and norm comes in and draws so that was a big hoopla all over we got norm and strictly and ward out there and then maynard was trying to make a big spectacle out of it trying to get viewers i guess and you know come over here we got this is gonna be the cast to watch and ward said hey i'll ride with you we get the truck i tell ward i said hey this this kid's who we gotta worry about <laughs> The hell with that when this kid, you know, and uh, we're laughing about it. Well, that little old lady female put on the clinic. I mean, and I'm, I'm like, who is this now? And they said, Rick was on the phone after the hunt. I said, I, 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 don't, I don't know who she is. You know, a, a dog named Lady, and they got in Randy Smith. And, well, you know Randy Smith, he's been around forever. And I'm like, dude, I, and, and I'm one of these people, you got, I got to know you and have interaction with you because. I mean, my God, we own close to 200 rental properties and, and, and you know, it, it's just names and I've been four or five different businesses and then I'm horrible with names anyway. I can remember a name, I can't remember a person, <laughs> you know. I, I mean, I have a cousin who goes, hey, how you doing? I'm like, who is that? You know, I'm just thinking. So I've really got to know somebody to really, to, to put them together. And uh, I'm like, I don't know Randy Smith. And, and then, so, about, I don't know, I drew her again and she looked really good. She won that cast, she beat us like a And uh, then I drew her again and she looked really good again. Um, and then I drew her a year later at the same hunt, the truck hunt. And uh, it, again, it didn't click, you know what I mean? It didn't click what dog it was. And I go and draw and Ward says, hey, you drew that bitch that we drew again last year you know i'm like lady bitch he goes yes what the hell that ain't good <laughs> so we go out and again i now i hunted apollo the first two times and then she beat i was hunting page the next time and she beat me on tiebreaker quarter it wasn't it wasn't bad i took two or three and she took two or three anyway she not beat me again and then the next night we were both in i, I hunted page late and got her in and I went in the club and they had a cast with like Ward and Weed and Bobby Burton. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't care about them guys. The only one I want to draw is that female. You know, I'm tired of that female, that Smith dude on <laughs> You know, <laughs> so uh, he, uh, I drew a card and flipped it over and bam, that's who I drew. Uh, now I beat her that night, I beat her with Paige. Um, but literally, my watch starts over automatically when a hunt's over. And uh, literally, we handled mine, I had a finger in the hollow, pulled out, pulled off. We had like a minute and 10 seconds left in the hunt. We walked and we stopped for a minute. I had 10 seconds left. And I asked that boy, I said, you gonna make me cut with 10? And he goes, no, if we just stand here, I'm good, let me listen. And we stood there, nothing opened. And when my clock said 2.08, this female come treated about 350 yards ahead of us and they're just out of nowhere and I walked in she had a double and that was the same female so she she two two three minutes left she had to beat me then so I told Maynard if you want a dog that's the dog you need to buy they were looking for a dog at the time so you need to call Randy Smith and, and uh, Randy <laughs> God love him and I mean I, I think the world of him now but I didn't know him then and, and Randy's from Pennsylvania, and you know how the Yankees are, they're a little different. <laughs> you know, they're Northerners, they, they sound a little different sometimes. Uh, so he calls me and he's like, hey, 
But yeah, he said, don't. And, and I had told somebody, and it might have been Maynard or somebody else, prior to that, like a year before that, that's a good thing, man, if you're looking for a dog, you know, that's one good. So somebody called him and said, hey, John Strickland said, so out of the blue, it's like, hey, this Randy Smith. I'm like, hey, Randy, how you doing, buddy? He said, hey, little dog. He said, yeah, don't, don't be telling nobody about my dog. I'm like, excuse me? He goes, I don't want to sell my dog. It's funny because the voice that he uses now when he calls was the same voice he used then. And that's like his joking. You know, he's yeah. like, tries to be a damn comedian, but he ain't funny. He's a Yankee Northern <laughs> funny. You know, it's different. It's just different. Anyway, he actually is funny when you know him. But anyway, he used that same voice and it cracks me up because I'm like, me and Suzanne's going down the road, I get him a speaker phone, I'm like, excuse me? He goes, yeah, don't be telling anybody about my dog. My dogs ain't for sale. I don't want to sell her. I wouldn't take nothing. And they had offered like 60, they were prepared to pay like 60, $70,000. You know, he goes, I wouldn't take a hundred. I wouldn't take nothing, but I'll give you half of her. And I'm like, all right, I'm listening. Now you got my attention, <laughs> you know? And uh, he said, hey, I, I I've bred these dogs for years, and, and we've been successful with them, but on the money side, the PKC side, the pro side, we, we really have. I need somebody that knows that side of the game to hunt these dogs and to, to help me put what's there on the map. And uh, I'm like, well, I don't know, and he's telling me about Bella, and she's better than Lady, and then another one's better than both of them, and I'm sitting there thinking, dude, I've been doing this since I was nine years old. You don't get no better than that bitch. You know what I mean? That is, there's a level, yeah, they can have better nights or they do things different, but that's the cream of the cream. I mean, they don't get no better. And uh, I'm like, here, this dude's got pins of females that are better, one better than the other, <laughs> yeah. you know? So uh, I'm like, okay. I said, all right, I said, uh, let me think about what kind of deal, you know, I'd want to do. And, and uh, he goes, well, I'm telling you, she ain't gonna cost you a penny. She's gonna be half yours. We sell her for half a million dollars down the road. No laughing, he would never sell her. Couldn't buy her a million dollars off of You couldn't buy it. <laughs> so, but I know that going in. So I'm like, all right, but I don't care anyway. I don't sell dogs. No, I don't do this to sell dogs. So, so I call him up and say, hey, we do this, 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 and this. I said, but you gotta understand, once I bring her to my house, anybody come get this dog. I'm not getting this dog ready. Cause I don't know, I, at this point, I don't know Randy. I, you know, a lot of guys think you get them in shape. And if I don't feel like going to a, a $30 hunt tonight, they're going to let Sambo or Buddy run down here and get him and go to a 30. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't do this that way. I do this on a bigger level and try to keep it so they're ready for a big level. And and I don't go to anything. I don't go to smaller hunts. So, I mean, they're great. I'll go guide for them. I'll go judge for them. But I just don't enjoy them. I just don't do it for that reason, you know. And, and I'm always gone to a hunt or hunt so much. I try when I'm off, I try to spend time with the, with the kids and the wife and family, you know? So, and I know it's hard on them. Yeah, I mean, it's real hard. So I try to balance that and within that balance and it really doesn't make room for the $30 or the $50 right. hunt down at Lebanon that all the guys get together and have a good time. You know, it's not that I don't want to be there. It's just that there's things that, that probably outweigh it. So he was, nope, 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 everything's good. We'll do it your way and I'm like, okay. And uh, so we'll get her to me at, at World Hunch, you know. And, and uh, they did. And uh, I, I hunted her, gosh, October, last of October, all of November, all of December, hunted her hard. And uh, she was out of shape, I got her in shape. She was a little bit heavy. And um, I could see it, you know, I could see it. And I'm like, she's, she's, she's the right kind. What I had seen before, mm -hmm. she started doing what she did for them, for me, you know, and was actually a little better shape, had more lungs and more stamina and whatnot. Um, but they got, I mean, they live in Pennsylvania. They ain't got to hunt we got. We, you know, they, they got rough hunting. They have to drive an hour sometimes on the way to hunt. We're gonna, we can walk across the yard and turn it loose, you know. For them to recast, it's a it's a job. When they go, they'll hunt three or four hours a night, and they can't hunt every night because it's so far to drive, and, and they and they work different hours. And and the, the Alton was hunting him and uh, hunting her, and he he was in college, and I mean that's hard enough to get through, and at points in her life. So I've seen it coming and coming and coming, and then it worked out. We started in January, and, and uh, then rolled on to Oklahoma and won the truck, and then. 
gosh, everywhere. I forget how many gas. If she was like an ATM, you know. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, she she's the right kind. Randy did a great job with that dog. Is there any other females that you co-own with him? Was that the only one? Bella. Bella. Bella Have you been hunting her? I, I've hunted. He come down here hunting. I, I drew her with Paige um, before getting Lady at the World Hunt. Um, I drew her in the late round and beat her. Uh, Gordy was hunting. I think Gordy was hunting her, um, and I beat her in the late round. And then um, I never hunted with her after that. And then they come up here. And it was just horrible. It was cold and couldn't look moving bright night and a hunter. Nothing really looked good at all. We hunted two nights. I think we treat two coons in two nights. It's pretty sick. Um, and uh, so I had hunted her a whole lot, you know. But but I believe what they tell me. I mean, actually, mm -hmm. I mean, Randy tells me that's a good one. You can bet that's a good one. Um, Josh has been hunter, and he knows they're probably really well. They won a hundred thousand with her the other day. So <laughs> obviously, you know, that's a good one too. Um, is she better than Lady? I ain't seen it yet, Randy. <laughs> just for you, Randy. Randy. Oh, she's better than Bella, Lady. I'm like, well, I, you got to show me. But uh, I, I'm sure she's the same caliber as I am, absolutely. Then the other one he's got up there that I can't even tell you the name of, but he says, hey, when you're ready, you call me. Um, I can assure you that's a good, that's a good one, too. I've hunted with probably close to 10 of them mm -hmm. now and I had, there wasn't one of them miss when they treated. They all, and like you said, the hunting is rough there. So they, they had to cover ground, mm -hmm. steep ground, and they don't have the population that we do either. Mm -hmm. And the first night I went there, it was like daylight. Like I was, I was worried it was full, full moon. Mm -hmm. I thought, man, we're gonna, and each dog treed two coon mm -hmm. and did it, did it well. And all females too, which is unique because yeah. most people, if they're going to hunt hard and be into it, it's yeah. all male stud dogs. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's changed my thoughts on it a lot too because then if you have a good female, if you if you want to raise pups or breed, you have your choice of whatever male you want. Them. And that's Randy's whole ideology about it. You know, hey, I can go wherever I want. I can pick whatever male dog and go any direction I want. If I want to bark more, I go with this one. If I want to tighten up, I can go with this one. And and uh, you know, I, I get it. That's why Randy keep training them. I'll just keep hunting them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's a good arrangement, though. If you like, a absolutely. If you like I'll females, win. hey, it works. Absolutely, it works. You're darn right. It'll be. And, and we've just scratched the surface. We didn't get started yet. I, I really feel that that little deal's going a long way. You know? Yeah, because he, if you like females. He's got a ton of really, really good females, and he's been into it for many years. And if you're your favorite females, he knows what a dog is. He knows what a dog is. Absolutely. He knows what it takes to win. So, what I guess, what dog are you going to be pushing the most coming up? Well, right now it's kind of unique. Um, so we sold Apollo. That left you just with nothing hot. So we let him take Lady, um, and then Paige has puppies. You know, so she'll be done with puppies and. Probably ready to break back out probably mid to end of July. Um, I own a little baby white female that we got second national for the other day with Jacob beating Phil and Jordan Mullins. Um, so I'm going to hunt baby white for a little while. Um, I, I don't really like to change dogs and take away from so and so. So as long as Judas and, and, and Lady get along good and they're doing what they do, then we'll probably leave them there for a little while. And you know, I'll hunt, I'll hunt baby a little while and then. Uh, to see how she progresses and works out. Who knows that the next one that Randy's got might be end up with what I end up with. You know? Yeah. Um, but Paige is going to be coming back, and and uh, she is six now. So you know she's got the next year, mm -hmm. year and a half, two years, probably in her prime. Honestly, that somebody's got that on her. So and she's kind of male dog like. She's got all the chrome and the big huge <laughs> mouth and I mean you would think she's a male dog but she's not she's a female. Is there anything you want to add before you get out of here and go to the woods? No, I'm gonna very scared on you telling me on No it's all right. You, 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 you come and made me pick up rocks. Yeah. I picking up rocks. Drove rocks. all this way to do yard work. Yeah. <laughs> yard work. No. Let's go free coon. Sounds good. <laughs> While you're doing that, you want to introduce yourself, what dog you're hunting? Uh, my name's J. 
Josh Sizemore from uh, London, Kentucky, and I'm hunting uh, Lone Pine Bella. And you just won that big hunt with her, didn't you? Yes, sir. Yeah, we just won a hundred thousand two weeks ago. Nice. I bet that made you happy. <laughs> it helped. <Yeah. laughs> it took the pressure off for a couple weeks, anyways. Before we get turned loose, you want to introduce yourself, what dog you're hunting? Yeah. So, uh, I'm uh, Judas Bowling. I'm hunting Lone Pine Lady tonight. Randy Smith and John Strickland, female. And the race is on. Lady ain't having nothing to do with that bow. Uh -uh. She's probably running, lady. No, she fit to come right back here and tree a coon in here. You watch. You want to bet, dude? She's going to tree one somewhere. Watch what I tell you. She'll be treated right here in these woods behind sure. her. We got the hundred thousand dollar winner out here teaching us. <laughs> huh? And Jacob, Jacob was a winner this weekend. Heck, we got two professionals out here. I'll just want enough to get a four piece hey. chicken nugget. <laughs> he didn't even stay awake long enough. We ain't talking about you. <laughs> Judas said he wanted a cast, but we ain't talking about Judas. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Look out. let me tell you something, boys. You put it in the universe, it happens. It's over. Right? Now, where's she at? She's got that coon tree. Where's she at? In that little holler behind, behind us, right? What did I tell you she was going to do? It's going to be the first dog recut, Josh. It's all over for you now. You hear that? That's Lone Pine Lady with a coon tree. What'd you just turn loose? Betty. Betty struck. <laughs> Two were split off that direction. Look at this here, boss. She drinks right out of the bottle. Josh, yeah, I'm trying to get it figured out. Yeah. Once I've seen the car. I told you before. Another long walk. Yeah. Wear your boots out. Keeping up for this. <laughs> Get on there, girl. Go ahead, Don says you got it.
Well, yeah. they, they were behind me, so I was checking down low because they were shot on the top. So I was just handling John Dalton. Yeah. Uh, Benny Field and Jordan Mullins trained. Um, we got her in the. We get she's she's the national reserve national champion actually. What's she out of? Jordan, what's she out of? Called <laughs> called nocturnal smoke and a female called Ruby. A guy named Grant Tennessee owns and I believe she's off of Nikki Hill's dog. They called smearing off ice. They changed his name to Roman or something. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> what dog's that? That's he just cut lady. No, nah, I just let's get something free. Just cut lady. Yeah. And loaded. Yeah, that's fine. You wanna talk about lady style a little bit, kinda of how she handles hunts? She handles good. You call her, she come right to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um she's a I mean, she's a real, real, real uh she's, she's kinda of sneaky. You you won't think she's going anywhere you turn loose, she'll be angling around you for a minute and then you look down your garment, she'll be eight hundred. Um, she will not be with a dog. You've seen a while ago. We cut her and Bella barking through there and she just wheeled behind us and she's going to be as far away from a dog as she can be. She trees them as she comes to them. She'll tree 150 yards. She'll tree one 550 yards. Uh, real, real accurate. Just stupid accurate. Got cones when you trees. Um, uh, could be a little better strike dog. I, I ride around shooting a gun out the window and and blowing coon squall going down the road to make her bark in the dog box to make Randy mad. I, we got her opening a little <laughs> we got her opening a little faster doing stupid stuff like that. Randy says she has no manners anymore. He's like, You've taken all the manners away from this dog. I said, I just need her barking, you know, I need a barker. So uh but she's uh she's got coons when she trees and uh she's broke. Um she don't do a lot wrong. What you get you're gonna keep. Whenever I first brought her these Jordan and Jacob come hunting and they said, What's that? And I said what, how old, 10 month old? 11, 11 month old, that's 11 month old pup I picked up. <laughs> and uh, they're like, all right, and they were hanging out with Cole McBay at the time. I think they're still big buddies with Cole, and Cole was spending money left and right buying dogs, you know, and we go in there, and we I think we cut Paige and maybe Betty, and they get on in there where I said, well, let, let's cut this pup, see if she'll go hunting. And, and she was real goofy acting when I first started hunting her. She, she really didn't want to go. She, she takes a while to get used to you. So she kind of trotted around there like a pup would do. And that's why I told her she's 11 months old. <laughs> Next thing you know, she's sitting through there tree. And we rode around, we shoot coon out and put her in the truck. And we ride on down these other dogs. When we get them gone, we do it again. We cut her and she does the same thing. Bits around on this hillside. Bam, <laughs> she's tree right there and got another coon and shoot that one out. And, and uh, them boys is, I see them back there talking to themselves. They're kind of whispering, you know. They ain't saying nothing to me. They ain't saying nothing to my hunt. They scheming. So uh, I guess the uh, next day, you going to hunt tonight? I'm like, yeah, well, you going to bring that pup? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to bring that pup. All right, all right, let's go. So I load Lady to pup up, you know, and Paige, and they bring Betty. We're going to go hunting. And that same thing, we cut Lady loose, and she treated a coon. Yeah, so, you know, I wonder if she'll recast. <laughs> so I pull her off this tree and I send her again. She goes over there, bam, trees another coon. I think she treed three that night. And Jordan's <laughs> like, man, uh, 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 I, I know this is kind of a stupid statement. He says, but um, you, you think y'all might be interested in selling that pup? I know you don't <laughs> hunt pups and all, you know, but I've been talking to Cole and Cole's looking for a good pup. <laughs> but anyway, I had him for about two nights and I could have drug it out. Well, no. No, I'll tell you what happened. I didn't tell him any different. In Jordan, what hunt did we go to? Claremont? To a pro sport hunt, to Jacob. Yeah. So we were going to a Claremont pro sport hunt. Jacob rode with me and I loaded Lady up. And he goes, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I, you know, this pup been doing pretty good. And they, <laughs> they clued in, you lying suckers, what are you doing? That ain't no pup. So I think they figured it out pretty quick on us. But <laughs> I had them right, I wanted them for a little while. I was going to get a good $7,500 out of them for this pup, you know. <laughs> I don't think that would have passed with Randy, but you want 7500 Huh? You want 7500 I tried to talk to Randy. He said, oh, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> and that's Betty White, correct? Betty White. Reserve national champion. John won with her. You know how old she is? Uh, she might have just turned three, I believe. So she's young. Yeah, she's young. <laughs> That's why I wanted her number that way I know what she's doing. No, we ain't giving Judas the Garmin number. <laughs> Judas is out here trying to shock our dog. <laughs> he ain't got that number. Said that. Huh? <laughs> Bella's tree. Oh, gotcha. She's Bella. out of order. 
I've got 200 over we here. We go to so the I'm, easiest I'm, ones, bud. I've got 200. We got to cross the creek to get to you. Yeah. All three are treated again. In here, so. You're what? Uh, he said he's 200 over there. I said, I'm 300 in here. Yeah, I know, but I'm going to get to get recut for. This tree we tree, I bet I've treed on this tree 200 times. I've seen a coon in it maybe twice, but I ain't found a good hole even during the winter time. Treat in there, across that water. Had two coon up there. <coughs> come on, come on, come on. Another one. Right in there. Oh yeah, right there. Two of them. How many is that so far? That Josh is getting hit me now, him. How many, many you tree, Josh? Judas over here taking the absolute longest time he possibly can to get a dog off a tree. Judas is feeding the dog too much, boy. Which one you just cut? Lady. Thought that was lady. Which one you turn on? Is that Bella now? Um, they did 
you know Greg Lucas? Yeah. They get him today. How long it takes you Garvin to go off 20 seconds? <laughs> I need to update you thing back. I don't know if she's <laughs> gonna lock it in there, but I believe she just hit up her a little. Good boy, Kyle. Good boy, buddy. <laughs>